Game shows have always intrigued me. The idea of turning a game into a short burst of televised entertainment is just odd. Why do people enjoy watching other people play a game? Why do we enjoy seeing other people win? Or lose? The idea of turning this passive experience into an interactive experience through a video game is even more strange to me. It's no longer watching other people. You become the person playing the game, winning the prizes. Except that the prizes are fake. So it just becomes more like any other game. The Price is Right, 2010 by Ludia, published by Ubisoft, is the newest of these games turned game show turned video game, and only cost $20 on the PC. It also came out for the Wii and I think the DS. The last game show game that I played before this was the first Wheel of Fortune game on DOS and Jeopardy in the Commodore 64, so it's been a while. So I was curious to see how far game shows had come in the past, I don't know, 20 years. After the game displays a disclaimer saying that the prizes are not real, you are forced to create an avatar. You can give it a name, choose the gender, looks, clothing, the standard avatar stuff. Most of the items will need to be unlocked, so there's not much at first to choose from. The avatars themselves look okay, I guess. Once you got that stuff out of the way, you can just go straight into the game. I'm only going to cover the classic game show mode because that's all I really care to play. And I'm too lazy to capture footage for the other modes. Seriously, I just don't want to do it. I love the omnipresent retro music that The Price is Right has, and thankfully they kept it in the game. It's like it's 1966 all over again. I guess. I wasn't there. You'll get to play one entire show, exactly as seen on TV. Interestingly, there is no Bob Barker in the game, or even Drew Carey, or anybody else. In fact, there's no host. There's nothing, just the narrator dude. I'm not even sure if he's the same guy that's on the show. It kind of sounds like him, but, you know, it, it's not exactly. Essentially, the game is The Price is Right. I'll let the announcer dude explain. You're off to the showcase. The showcase is your last chance to pile up that prize money. The game ends after the showcase. Good luck. Welcome to Contestants Row. The contestant with the bid closest to the actual retail price of the item, without going over, wins the item and gets to come up on stage to play a pricing game. Here is the item up for bids. It's a canoe package. Extremely graceful in appearance, the Old Town Charles River Canoe combines old-school design with performance and durability, perfect for rivers and flat water. The Charles River Canoe paddles like a dream from old... Let's start the bidding. One wonderful thing bid. about playing this on a PC is the ability to get a little hint. For instance, the canoes here. And it looks like they cost about 1400 So I'm going to guess 1200 just to be safe. This item's actual retail price is... Come up on stage! Oh my gosh, I won! First try. This chick absolutely disturbs me. I swear I know a girl that acts and looks just like this. Blank stare, looking around like she's some lab experiment, clapping along to who knows what, probably because she's crazy. You can tell there's absolutely nothing going on behind those weird eyes of hers. The first time you play, every time the first time you play, in fact, you start out on the golden road, so if you just start the game, delete your profile, and start back over, then you'll start back in the same exact spot, and you can guess everything correct the first time without even looking at Google. Ashley is accentuated with antique brass hardware, plus plenty of nooks and crannies for storage from the Ashley companies. Which of these numbers is the correct number for the prize? Is this the correct number? Yes, it's the correct number. One of the numbers from this prize is the second number for the next prize. Keep it up. It's a pumper pool table. 
This is my first time around here on this one, so I will indeed check back with Google to see if I can maybe take a guess, but it doesn't seem to help on these types of games because they could put in any number they want in there and it'll be close enough. Doesn't matter. This is the price is right. So you go straight on to the big wheel thing. I actually like how they did this. You have a little hand icon cursor that appears and you can drag it down quicker or whatever and yeah, it just works. I tried to spin it backwards, but it wouldn't let me. So that kind of annoyed me. Would you like to due spin to its again? lack of realism. Somehow I got the ever elusive 95 my first time. So that's cool. I don't know if it's just being nice or what. Unfortunately, you do have to wait for these other stupid, stupid characters that you haven't seen up until this point to get done with their totals. You can't skip anything. Fifty. I just think it's interesting that you can't skip this, but yet you can't watch the other players play their games. I would at least like that option, so maybe I could skip them if I wanted to, or I could watch their games. I'd like to see some of the other mini-games that are in here without playing through them myself, necessarily. Speaking of options, there are none in the options menu. There is nothing but uh, an option for sound volume, music volume, and something else, but it wasn't important. There's no graphics options except for full screen mode and windowed mode. So I just played it in windowed mode, because otherwise it goes into like 1024, 768, and I have, I don't know, a 24-inch widescreen monitor, so that looks stupid on mine. So I just put it in a window, it looks fine. Welcome to the if you win at the wheel thing, you'll go to the Showcase Showdown. The Showcase has a park ranger describing some tourist destinations that didn't quite catch up. First, there's the Bland Canyon. These videos are absolutely painful. And the problem with it, too, is not only are they just classic Price is Right cheesy, they're so frickin' tiny. Like, they're hard to see, especially on a high-resolution monitor. And then there's the not-so-popular area known as the Batarondacks, a place so obsessed with weight loss that the only amenity each hotel offers is the use of a new trick. This showcase sucks. Take the other one. Blah, blah, blah. It is what it is. It's a showcase. There's a car. Who'd have guessed? And it's a Chevy HHR. Now, here's the problem with these videos. I don't know when they were recorded. They could have been from any point in the last five years. So, I guessed that maybe this was a 2007. And I didn't know what kind of options the car had, so I, I overshot it big time. You lost the and the game. rest of the game is just that. It's um, it the same exact thing over and over. Really single player, exactly it's not exactly TV. the most exhilarating experience that I have ever had. Freezer. I mean, Let's I guess it's like any bit. of the other game shows, Jeopardy's The Wheel of Fortunes and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. There's only so much to it, and if you're not your winning real bet. prizes, these games are pretty boring. That you don't have the crowd throwing up gang signs and stuff trying to show you what the price should be. So you don't have that to look at. All you have is Google. The way some of the mini games are done are pretty cool. Like the, you know, hit the ball on the golf hole and stuff like that. It's enormously easy compared to the rigged traps that they have and call games on the real show. And I imagine that the Wii version or the DS version actually might be a little more enjoyable because of the social aspect that's possible there and the touch controls and you know, whatever else they throw in those game systems these days. So, it all comes down to the question of whether or not the game's worth the $20. Well, as an interesting piece of gaming history, maybe, if you like this kind of thing, it's actually pretty fun. I'm not sure if I like this kind of thing. It's just weird, the whole concept of it. But I'm probably looking into it too far. I mean, why do we play any game, for that matter? The Wii version, I think, is something like $40. It's absolutely not worth that. Of course, most of the Wii games that I have played are not worth it. 
In fact, I can't think of any that I've played, that I have paid for, that have been worth it. Wii Sports, maybe, but that came with a freaking system. Whatever, I'm not going on a Wii rant, so... Which Price is right, 2010. Who knew it would be around this long? Holy crap. The remaining item is therefore the most expensive.